This show features adults using adult language. Howdy folks, this is Caleb Sunstead, your host and game marshal. Sounds Like Crows is an edited actual play podcast where a posse of nerds pretend to be cowboys. On the show, we improvise a story using the setting and system of Deadlands Reloaded. I probably should have put this at the top of, you know, the Thanksgiving episode, but I'd like to thank a bunch of folks that have been key in the production of this show. First up, a huge thank you to my incredible wife, Jessica, who has been invaluable in every aspect of production. I'd like to thank Bree, Austin, and Liz for their insightful feedback on these early episodes, as well as Ashley Wild, who you can thank by going to ashleywild.com. I'd like to thank the entire cast for their help with various aspects of the show, and I'd like to give a shout out to Toby Kaler for his assistance with prep work and production. I'm massively grateful to Rudy Zuniga for doing our music, who you can find on our website. Special thanks to Jody Black at Pinnacle for her expertise with some finishing touches. And finally, to Cat Cool and James D'Amato of the One Shot Network. You two have not only affected how I tell stories as a GM and player, but have been a source of inspiration for our entire show. I know that if I never listened to Campaign, I would not be making this show. With all that out of the way, welcome to the Weird West. Last time, the Crow Boys were bearing their mama when Cole Marston arrived, spitting all sorts of vile wickedness out of his foul mouth. Lucky challenged Cole to a duel, to which Cole accepted. Now, the Crow Boys are saying their final farewell to Meadow Crow. Harper takes a step forward with a bunch of dirt in his hand and drops into the grave. Sorry I lied to you about the hunting, but uh, I knew you'd worry. I never did get to apologize for that. I know you'll uh, be keeping a keen eye on me. And he just kind of takes a moment and uh, walks away. Uh, Lucky kind of steps up next and he uh, looks solemnly at the grave. I know you wouldn't blame me. For your death. But God, is it hard not to feel that way. Whoever did this to you, there's a storm coming for him. And then he throws down a cloud of dirt and walks away. Abel steps up and uh, scoops up a handful of dirt. He opens his mouth to speak and then closes it again. He seems to pause for a second. But the words die in his throat. He throws the dirt in and walks away. Ellis looks down at the dirt in his hand and he looks to the grave. Ma, you always were too good for this world. I would do anything to take your place right now. The only justice I can give you is to find the man who did this to you and put him in the same place that you are now. Throws the dirt in the grave and looks at Thaddeus. Thaddeus takes a deep breath, grabs two handfuls of dirt, walks up to the the grave. Mama, we didn't always get along. We didn't always see side of that eye. But uh, I know you want it better from him. And I swear to you, we'll find justice, and I'll keep an eye on the boys. And then he tosses the, the dirt in. As you throw the clot of dirt down on the ground, another clot of dirt hits the ground as it's knocked up by a horse. The camera pans up, and the uh, sun's a little past noon. It's the uh, middle of town. A lot of folks have started to uh, make their way out on the porches to watch word spread fast, especially uh, with... Cole Marston making his talk around town. Uh, He is sitting in the middle of the street. He's pulled out a chair from a nearby building, has it sat down, and he's reading a book in the center of the town. Eugene is standing nearby at the uh, marshal's office 
where the town uh, marshal Clay Marston also stands, although he's kind of in the alleyway holding a bottle of something. More gun-toting fellas stand nearby, some on some banisters up top, the local saloon maybe, and a couple across the street as well. As uh, you guys approach, you count five in total in addition to Clay and Eugene Marston, making seven total. Abel's definitely a little more strapped up this time. A uh, revolver on one hip and then uh, a shotgun sawed off, loosely held in the left hand. Once we get back to the main streets, he's going to go stand next to the marshal. As we pull up, Harper pulls off into one of the alleys. He's got all of his saddlebags, so he doesn't really have that big duffel bag anymore. He's got all of his stuff loaded into his saddlebags. And uh, he pulls his rifle out of the rifle sleeve, ties up his horse, and he climbs up one of the buildings. So he's got a pretty good view of a... Uh, all them other fellers sitting across the way. Perfect. Where's Thaddeus and uh, Ellis? Thaddeus was probably drawn up the rear, so probably take his position off the left side of Lucky, probably opposite of the Marshal and uh, Abel. He's got his double air shotgun resting on a on his lap as he sits on a barrel off to the side. Ellis was following uh, Harper and Lucky as they made their way into the town center. Uh, he sees Harper kind of go off. Do we see the the seven men, or do like what, yeah, what you, do we have visuals? You can of? make them out pretty clearly. Um, Are they just kind of lined up side by side, or do they're they... on similar positions to Harper? They found positions of cover, you know, ah, behind some barrels or what have you, uh, boxes and crates and alleyways and stuff. They've all taken cover. Ellis follows closely behind Lucky. He uh, he bends down, picks up a few pebbles from the ground. Puts his hand on Lucky's shoulder. He says, uh, you know, we've got your back. And then he kind of veers off to the side. Lucky nods confidently at uh, Ellis. Or at least he pretends to nod confidently. But his uh, hand nervously fidgets with the rabbit's foot that hangs off his five-shot revolver. And his hand shakes as he's doing it. He's scared that perhaps they can hear how fast his heart is beating right now. Abel is near uh, Eugene and the marshal, and uh, the marshal says, Now, I can't have you boys killing my boy. There's no need for this. Nobody killing no one, marshal. I've only seen this a couple times in my life, but I reckon, Abel, that someone's dying today. Oh, someone's gonna die today, marshal, but ain't nobody killing no one. When you stand on the street, you lose your status as a man in the eyes of the law when you're there you're nothing but a force of nature ain't nobody arrest a tornado for crashing a house ain't nobody arrest the hail this is god's work today that's hogwash abel them men standing in them streets those are two boys and one of them's mine now you tell your brothers stand down y'all can still ride out of here okay I ain't worried about the riding out. I'm worried about the carrying out, Marshal. He turns to he turns to look at him, and I, I think the camera gives a real close-up shot this time. The left-hand side of his face is almost entirely covered in uh, kind of scar tissue. It looks like it was blistered very, very badly at one point or another. Not quite burn scars, but definitely uh, deformity. Uh, something bad happened on that side. He leans close to the Marshal. You can stop it if you like, but I know what happens to a man who tries to stop the whirlwind. Clay ties down his gun belt, nods, says, uh, it's nice knowing you, Abel. Abel, uh, doesn't reply. Him and, uh, Eugene walk off to a nearby building and take some spots inside of a window. Fucking this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, Daddy, you heard what he said, but... You, you, you can't Listen. you can't let a man do that at his birth. The marshal takes aside Eugene so that Abel can't hear, and he says, Now you listen, boy. Your brother knows what he's doing, and them crow boys are honorable sorts. I hope that Cole wins. I don't mean for anybody to die, but if somebody's got to die today, it shouldn't be your brother. But otherwise, you keep that rifle handy. I, I, all right, Pa. I, I will. <laughs> and, and he'll take some some cover behind 
you know, like probably whatever, like a, a step and a half behind his dad. Dude, Eugene does not deserve this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody else is like, fuck. I'm so, uh, genuinely nervous right now. I'm not going to You should be, dude. I, I am fucking terrified. This is not it is it. so scary, dude. Hey, I'm okay, fucking, I could yeah. die right now. What do you so, got? Uh, Harper's going to hop up on like in plain view. And uh, he's going to look at the five gentlemen, kind of like standing in similar positions. Mm-hmm. And he's going to point his hand like a gun. And just one at a time. One, two, three, four, five. Dang. And then uh, he's just going to hold his hands out to his sides like, like what do you got? And he's going to drop down to his position. And then I'm going to roll a stealth roll oh. to see if I can move to a different position. Sure. Do it without up. Without them noticing. No. That blows up. That blows oh, up again. He is a ninja. 13. Holy oh, shit. shit. Ninjas over there. Okay, well, to give him the biggest chance, I'm going to roll one for each of them. So one rolls a six, that blows up into a seven. So no, they're all, two of them are like, I'm going to kill that motherfucker. <laughs> I got my sights on him today. And then you sneak away as they get your their shit set up. How far away are these night. guys, by the way? Uh, 12 feet. 12 feet. 12 yards. <laughs> 12, yards. 12 feet. I kiss him right on the mouth. <laughs> so I would say that from the two duelists, 40 yards away. Ooh. Unless you want to be closer, because you can be. Well, I'd like to get close to uh, the three of his, his minions here. Yeah. So all that would mean is that you have to set up sort of opposite the marshal's office. You'd have to set up. So, sorry, real quick. I envision myself standing in front of the marshal's office. Where Do I have yeah. line of sight to any of the other bad guys? Yeah, you got you got line of sight to all the minions except one, maybe. Okay. So there's a west and east side of the street. There's probably about three of the outlaws on the west side of the street. Two of them in the middle of the street behind like a wagon they've pulled out. And then the marshal and Eugene will be set up in the carpenter's shop, which is one building south of the marshal's office. So, so I kind of want to get within 12 yards of at least two of these guys. Is that possible? So you saunter over to the saloon's boardwalk, has an extensive boardwalk with a lot of pillars, and you just sort of lean behind one of the... They've got these outcroppings, which are large windows, but they've got pillars and I'm holding the saloon up that you could take cover behind. And I see a couple of guys within 12 yards. You see a couple of guys hiding behind barrels in one of the alleys. They pulled some barrels out from the local uh, fucking whatever. Right. Some random Western barrels. Yeah. Western Cowboy barrels. Yeah. Western yeah. barrels. Yeah. barrels. Yeah. barrels. Yeah. barrels. barrels. Do these boys think, have their weapons drawn? I imagine they do, but they're sort of hidden underneath the barrels, you know? So in my right hand, I've just got the pebbles that I've picked up kind of concealed. With my left hand, I just tip my hat at those those two guys. They look at you, look at each other confused, and then look to the duel about to take place in the I center think, of the street. I think once Harper disappears, Thaddeus also tries to, to sneak away a little bit. Uh, and he's going to be opposite the side of the street that the uh, the marshal's on. Perfect. So you're so, also nearby the saloon. Uh, ooh, his his wild die ooh. exploded. Uh, so that's an eleven. Eleven on stealth. Indeed. You managed to yeah. You sneak into town to uh, none of them get to see you. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So then I'm I don't necessarily know where Harper's at because he disappeared too. But uh, sneaky sneaky. Um, I'm opposite the marshal. Perfect. Lucky. You go into the center of town, a little bit nervous. Cole's sitting there. He closes the book he's reading. And as he tosses it aside, you can see he was reading the Bible. Takes a step up, kind of kicks the chair to one side of the street. He says, uh, Well, shoot, Lucky, you ready for this bar or what? Lucky's, <laughs> Lucky starts walking into position. He's done this a couple times, a handful of times at this point. This isn't his first duel. But it never becomes easier. He's nervous as all hell because he knows one of us is going to die today. Duels start with the face-off. Each duelist is dealt two cards face-up. These are your whole cards. Now you, Lucky, get some more whole cards, right? Because I have the edge duelist, I get an extra whole card for every grit I have. Ooh. Because I took the edge true grit, I also get plus one grit. So I would get four cards. So you've got four (laughs) cards to Cole's two cards. You guys stand up, face each other, hands over your guns. Eyes the marshal, I'm going to look at Cole's hand, you're going to look at yours. So each of the duelists, Lucky and Cole, 
either make a single intimidation or taunt roll. So you're either trying to do the hard stare at your opponent or trying to unnerve your opponent with trash talk. And we just uh, roll opposed rolls. I think Cole's using taunt, obviously. What's Lucky using? He's also going to be taunting. Literally oh, so tense right now. I'm chewing up. Yeah, me too. <laughs> cool. Mama, you have no fucking clue, dude. <laughs> like, I, feel, I feel pretty confident. Uh, you shouldn't. Uh, if you read Duel, it's uh, even if I win any of these, I could still very well die. It's true. It's true. You could still die. But first session, he's mm -hmm. got a D six and taunt. That so is, I'm gonna roll for him, then I'll do what he says. And Marshall both feel confident. Okay. I mean, I don't. Oh baby. Shit. That's well, right. guys. Tell you what though, oh, sure. that is snake. Oh shit, we talked about this. Yes, yep. we did. We critical said fail. critical failure, and you cannot re-roll it. Cannot re-roll it. Shit. So. uh... I think what he does is he says something that he means to unnerve Lucky. Shoot, boy, I heard you use that gun so many times, murdered so many people down in the streets. <laughs> I heard you right quick with that thing, ain't you? Hey, Eugene. <laughs> Eugene does not reply. Lucky, uh, he steals his hand. It's almost as if time slows down in these couple of seconds, the moment before the draw. He smiles a real big grin at him, revealing all his gold teeth. That's right, I am pretty quick with this. And this time, your dad's not here to protect you. You son of a bitch! So what does this mean? So he gets a negative two for the actual shooting phase. And for everyone watching, he is definitely, without a doubt, the one that grabbed his gun first. Ha <laughs> ha, you little yep. son of a bitch! You could still very well murder me right now. <laughs> Depending on what, this, what yes. those cards say yeah. right there. He's either a murderer self -defense. or it's self-defense. Yes, it is 100% self-defense, even if point. he does gun me down pretty fucking bad. That's good. That's good. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> so at this point, Cole and Lucky each have two cards in hand, and we deal uh, three cards, just like the river in Texas Hold'em, if everyone is familiar with that. Sure. We got an ace of hearts, oh, a fuck. two of spades, and a seven of clubs. Shoot. <laughs> this is fucking <laughs> Shoot. crazy. Shoot. So at this point, let me describe how this works. Each cow poke, starting with whoever lost the face off, Correct. Which, is, which is Cole, he was taunted into shooting you, draws his card first. Um, he has to decide whether to go for speed or accuracy. He's pissed off, so I think he's going to go for speed. The speed's going to uh, include a negative two penalty in addition to losing the taunt, the test of will battle. So, so he's, he's going to get a negative four. four. Damn. He's going for accuracy. Ooh, so accuracy means that if he can shoot you down first, you don't even get a shot. Correct. And if he wounds you, any wound penalties apply to the actual your shot as well. Correct. But you don't get the negative two for going for speed. Yes. Fuck yeah. So reveal our hands. Cole has uh, ace high, I guess, right? <laughs> King high. I got two pairs. Oh, nice. shit. Ooh. Oh, that's bad news for Cole, guys. If I Holy get shit. to hit him. Cole! In the clutch. So what does the hand give us? The hand actually gives us nothing except extra damage modifiers, depending on the difference how well the other hand is. So if it's you high. get a very good hand, you're going to do a lot more damage when you do actually hit. If you actually hit. So ace Love high. It. Ace high compared two? to two pairs, that is one, two, three ranks above it. So he's got an extra 3d6 3 3 damage. Yeah. So I'm going to be rolling a 5d6 plus 1 if it does Oh hit. my god. Cole Marson's going to make his shooting roll first. He goes fast and hard for his revolver, pulls it out. It's a Colt Dragoon. He's got a d6 in shooting. He cannot hit unless it blows up. Oh, unless it blows up, baby. Oh, that's a 7 minus 4. 3. 3. It's a miss. He is going to spend a blue Benny to add an additional d6. Oh no. Oh He's got a edge, Ellen, which means whenever he spends a Benny, he adds plus two to the roll. So it's an automatic hit. Yeah. Eight. So he hits with a raise. With a raise. So Correct. that means he just does his damage plus an extra D6. Um, he's got AP one, so he pierces any armor you have. Uh, yikes. Yikes, buddy. That's 13 damage. All right. Well, Lucky has a toughness of five. Uh, two wounds. That's oh, shaken shit. in two wounds unless you want to spend a Benny to try to make a vigor roll. Or you could you can soak, right? Is that what he's... Well, yeah. He could spend a Benny to soak. I will absolutely do that, Caleb. Yeah. So just to be clear, you could take three wounds and then your fourth wound, you're just incapacitated and down. So if he doesn't soak this, this is half his health right now. 
Yeah, nine. So that's uh, that's two wounds reduced. And since you reduced it to zero, since you didn't take any wounds, you're not even shaking either. That's how really? soap rolls so work. Yeah. Misses. So yeah, so you so just dodge he, it. He draws Ooh. perfectly, shoots dead on, and somehow, inexplicably, no one knows why to this day. Everybody says Cole's aim was dead on. That shot goes wide and slams into the ground next to Lucky. Well, ain't that why they call him Lucky? <laughs> <laughs> Lucky does a wide grin, takes his time to aim his shot, and says, Well, that was pretty lucky. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Fuck me. You got more bennies, right? He I doesn't have more do bennies. What is I it? Oh, shit, that's right. It is a two. The shot it shoots, and the reason it misses is because Cole cowardly takes a roll to the side and then comes up in a crouch and we go uh into initiative as as that battle as those shots ring out the uh marshal bashes out the window of the carpenter's office and takes aim and all the outlaws accompanying marshal also aim to fire what are the rules for a sneak attack if he gets the drop it's plus four to his attack and damage rules should he decide to strike so that's both the Thaddeus and to uh, this dude over here. Right? <laughs> oh shit, my turn just got real sick. Yeah. So we got a queen of spades to Thaddeus, a five of hearts to Ellis. We've got a eight of hearts to Abel, six of spades to Harper, four of spades to uh, this here lucky fellow over here. Cole Marston. <laughs> Somewhat lucky. Oh, Cole Marston gets a queen of clubs. Spades beat clubs. Spades beats clubs. Sheriff Clay Marston gets a three of hearts. All the other cowpokes get a four of clubs. Cool. Thaddeus, what are you up to first there, partner? Oh, man. Well, are we not going to play this honorably? He ain't my brother, but oh. but he is defending the honor of my mama. So uh, Thaddeus was seething when he heard this fucking nobody Cole talking shit. He didn't hear. He didn't know about all the craziness that goes on between the younger three brothers. But he does know he was holding his tongue when Lucky was talking shit yesterday. So he's going to stay low-ish to the ground, not prone, but he's going to crouch for that negative one and get up closer to good old Cole and uh, take a shot with his shotgun. Oh, shit. Now, I don't have any shooting skill, but (laughs) I do. (laughs) But when using the double barrel shotgun, I do get a plus two to the roll. All right. So roll D4. Cool. So then I'm going to step out, pull my shotgun target it at good old Cole and uh, fire a uh, seven. seven. Hit, so hit not with the race. So do your damage, do your worst. Yep. Eight total. So you shoot that shotgun out and he looks over. Who, who the fuck's shooting at me? Get him, boys! You ain't shooting us, crows. And then I'm gonna take the, the rest of my movement to get back into some cover behind a trough for the horses or something like yeah, that? Yeah, you, you uh, head behind the trough. As you do, Cole uh, starts moving across the street towards his paw, and he takes a shot at you with his Colt Dragoon. Obviously upset that someone would take a shot at him. He's got a 10 total Yikes. to hit. Uh, minus 2 for cover, I'd say. So that's hit with the raise. 7, 8, 9 so damage. So only Not a raise. shakes me. Damn. He takes a shot slams right in that trough next to you water starts pouring out all on top of you and he doesn't get into cover but he does make it across the street next up is abel crow what are you doing this has broken all of the rules i'm used to seeing duels go down but to see everybody else like try to step into this that that offends a deep deep part of me this is supposed to be a contest between two people so uh it's time to reap the whirlwind um i'm gonna shoot cole I'm going to step into the into the gap between that building and the, sh- the marshal's office because I felt like they were next door, right? Yep, yep, they were. So I'll kind of step into that alley so that the sheriff doesn't have a clean line of sight on me. And totally. uh, I'm going to shoot Cole with, uh, with my pistol. 14 plus 1, 15. Uh, he's going to try to soak that <laughs> with a Benny. 15, okay, he's got to make a vigor roll here. He manages to soak one, but then he takes a wound. You shoot at him, and it I imagine it grazes like one of his names or his legs or something. Mm-hmm. And he goes, you yeah. son of a bitch! Goddamn cheaters! Next up, Harper. I moved just kind of like on like around the building, just to kind of like another spot up super high. Um, how many people can I see? I think from your vantage point with that roll, you can see fucking all of them. Okay, see. sweet. So Harper's gonna fan the hammer. 
Oh hey. shit! Because I have the jump on him, uh, I get plus four, and fan the hammer means yep, that I would have minus move. four. Fuck. It's high noon. <laughs> Tell me, dude, he said it. Oh, yeah. It's high, high noon. noon. So which one aren't you shooting? So uh, I'm not gonna shoot Cole. Perfect. I think I'm gonna shoot everyone else. So how how it works when you fan the hammer is you make a uh, shooting roll for each of them, but you only use one wild die, and then you can have your wild die replace any one of them. So Harper fans the hammer. He jumps out of his little cover up on top of the building where he has sight of just about everybody. Uh, from right to left, he fans the hammer. He hits everyone. The first person he hits is with a raise. Damn. So I'm just going to start dishing out damage. So who is this? Uh, this is the first dude behind the barrel. That's seven damage. Oh, I had a raise on him. Yep. Oof. That's a dead dude. That's a dead dude. That's a mega dead dude. You shoot straight through that barrel. Water goes everywhere. He just collapses backwards, dropping his gun, screaming. Next guy in line. Eight. Uh, he's just shaking. I imagine his buddy goes down. You take a shot at him into the barrel. He goes, what the fuck? Five. So he's shaking two. Oh, these both blow up. Oh, so shit. 12. This blows up again. Shit, dude. Give me your dice. That guy's dead. So the guy behind the wagon is shaken. Guy in the balcony just shoots, does that normal western thing where he breaks through the banisters, you know, falls uh, down uh, directly in front of the uh, marshal and Eugene. And then the last shot. So you take down one barrel boy, uh, the wagon boy, and then a dude in the banisters. So there's one balcony guy. Balcony boy. Balcony, balcony boy. Yeah. That's his name. So there's one left behind the barrels, shaking his fuck. One left on the balcony. So all the little bad guys, all the little random bandits are all shaken. Holy or dead. shit. Damn, that's good. So, uh, the way cool. this pans out is the camera pans over to him, like sitting with his back up against the wall, <laughs> and then he hears the gunshots go off, and a little smile kind of peeks around his, just on the corner of his mouth. He turns the corner and just fans the hammer just six times. Hell yeah. You know, three people fall, the other two take cover, and maybe scream a little bit, and he just kind of flips his gun, slips it right back in his holster, rolls back behind where he's got cover and he picks up his Winchester. Oh, wait. Okay, well, he, you're right. He can't pick up the Winchester. So I sit with full cover Planet directly four. next to my Winchester. Ellis, you're up. You got some stones in your hand. One of the guys you had your eyes on is shaking. Actually, he's still alive. Yeah, you're right. Never mind. So I'm behind this pillar yep. next to uh, the saloon. I see one of the guys behind one of the barrels that I had my sights on uh, fall over dead. Uh, how far away is the, the balcony for the second balcony boy? Probably about uh, 20 yards. Oof. Taking these uh, pebbles in my hand, kind of moving them around, uh, take my sights on uh, one of the gentlemen behind this barrel, and I'm going to use bolt. Uh, what? So with, uh, <laughs> the, the rest of you probably don't notice it. It's just a blur of motion, and I throw three of these pebbles. I'm going to spend uh, six power points on this. Oh, shit. So what each the of these fuck? is going to be doing uh, 3d6 if I'm successful. So I guess I can, I can move a little bit. I'll take sight on him and the, the second balcony guy as I kind of just walk between uh, between one building across the road into like the the deck of another building over on the other side of the road. Ooh, blew up. So that's a six. Blew up. That's Shit. a nineteen. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my <laughs> god! Ass up. So a, f a four minus two. So yeah. that's a seventeen. Oh so it's god. that's a of success plus three raises. Is it an additional d6 per raise? Is it? Yeah. The, Holy hell. So, I mean, you so can... So it's like 66 per target. <laughs> and I have three bolts. I was just, just going to shoot... put stones through their faces. I was going to shoot two at one guy and like one at the now, other. Now, what them oh, crow so boys wait, didn't know bolts. is you only ever add one D6 of damage, regardless of how many raises you get. But, hey, right. they're having oh, fun. Fuck. Is that right? So why don't we just leave them right. alone yeah. I mean, how many times do you blow that up? Twice. And then uh, there was a six, a six, and then uh, I mean that's like a fucking crit. That's like a five percent chance. Just home, bad boy. So, yep. Hell yeah. All right. How do you kill these guys without? I mean, it's gonna look flashy at this point. Unfortunately, I think. Well, I don't kill honestly. Them? Okay, I look at the one that got shot by Harper here. Kind of, I kind of shake my head, shrug, walk across the street. As I walk, there's just a flash of motion. I throw the three pebbles uh, to connect with the gentleman behind the barrel. His head just explodes. It's too fast for anybody to see. And the guy on the balcony uh, takes one right through the chest. Damn. I end up on the other side of the street behind another pillar, straighten my tie, and just kind of watch what's going on. That's the end of my turn. Lucky. Uh, who's still alive? <laughs> still alive is the Marshal, Eugene, and Cole, and they're all holed up by the carpenter's office. Cole's on the boardwalk, and Eugene and the Marshal are holed up inside behind windows. Where's Abel? I am next to the Marshal's, or next to the wherever the building they're in. Like, yeah, I'm on the outside of it. 
in the alley. With cover. Oh, yeah. They can't even see him. They don't even have a line of sight on him. Yeah. But he can still shoot Cole. If I peeked around the corner, I could shoot Cole, I would imagine. Hell, yeah. Lucky's going to run as quickly as possible and slide right next to Abel. As soon as he gets there, he uh, peeks around the corner, and he sees that Cole is, uh, has a nick on his leg, and he's bleeding from it. And he says, hell, yeah. I knew I hit him. And then he, uh, <laughs> he peeks around again, and uh, he takes a shot. Seven to hit. Oh, blow it up. Thank God. Ten, including the plus one. You hit him with a wound. How do you wound him? I kind of just uh, place one right in the side, kind of probably about his left sort of chestish area. Probably nick a couple ribs. He spins towards the door, grasps onto the archway, gasping for air. He goes, you son of a bitch, Lucky! And he uh, pulls his gun to shoot at you. He's going to get negative two because you're covered there, and he's going to get negative two because of his wounds. So that's a miss. He's going to spend a red Benny. Add a d6 to that. That's only a one at the moment, so he's got to get a three to even hit you. Oh, Oof. He hits you, no race, and he does just six damage. Uh, that is shaking. So the bullet slams by into that wood directly in front of your face. You get pelted with some shrapnel, and he uh, dives inside the building next to him. Lucky sort of uh, recoils in uh, in shock, and he said, Abel, did I look cool or what? Abel, uh, Abel looks down. Ah, uh, well... You did. <laughs> <laughs> I like Abel. Town Marshal <laughs> Clay Marston has the hindrance yellow. He makes he's sense. A scaredy bitch. These no, his, he's literally yellow. These are his oh, boys. He's literally yellow. Like, yeah. have you ever seen Sin City? He's that oh, fucker. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. He takes a few steps outside, holding his gun into the air. And he says, There's no need for this. There's no need for more killing. Put down your guns. Let my boys live. It's silent on the street for a minute. And then uh, Abel's voice rings out. We can end this. We can end it right now. You step back inside. Send that boy right back out. You know I won't do it, Abel. He's my boy. He stepped and took an oath before God and man. Ain't nobody walk away from that. He looks back inside. He looks to Ellis walking across the street. He looks to Abel, and he says, uh, there's no need for this. Uh, a voice rings up from uh, behind some buildings as Harper yells out, well, that's fine. I can just take him in. I reckon it's a, it's a crime to fire on a bunch of boys, gather a posse ready for killing. I reckon he drew first. Seems to me like that's a crime. Fuck you, crow! I reckon you ain't in a position to be running your mouth. I reckon you ain't in a position to keep on living. Way I see I hit your brother twice now, okay? Cole, you shut the hell up. Hey, Cole, how many men I just put down? Five. Yeah, that's about right. Abel uh, leans down to Lucky and whispers, Get around back. Find the back door. Lucky nods and makes for the back. I would like either Abel or Harper to make a persuasion roll. You have it? I don't. <laughs> well, st- I'm the face, so <laughs> sure. <laughs> the stakes of this are if you succeed, the marshal will try and help you. If you fail, marshal's going to point his gun at you. Come on, face. I- <laughs> Just to be clear, I don't think he can actually see any of us. Maybe nope. Harper, but I'm around the corner shouting. No, I ducked. I got full cover he's, right now. He's taken a few steps out into the street. I, okay. He's like past the boardwalk, you know? Okay, fair enough. Well, I have a D4, guys, so this is going to go super well. <laughs> hey, you get a D6, I don't too. Have it at it's all. in there. And you got Benny's. Three and three. So you could uh, use your red Benny and add a D6 to that if you want. Well, that's up to you. I roll a D6 and add it on top. Yep. Or you can reroll all of them. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the red. Cool. Do so the red is also going to give Caleb a Benny too. I'm it's okay with that. Okay. I, I, yeah. I would really like this to end without us murdering a marshal. All right, uh, that's a two, so it puts me up to five. The marshal takes a look on back and he says, "All right, you come on out of there, Cole." Cole, uh, without peeking his head out, yells out to Harper, "What you gonna do to me after you put me in irons, there, Cole? I mean, fucking Harper." <laughs> Well, I reckon, Cole, I'm going to patch up them wounds. I'm going to take you wherever you need going. I reckon that's up to the judge. Judge being your brother? That's right. That don't sound fair to me, Harper. 
In all matters of the law, I am impartial. The way I see it, y'all crows are going to charge me with murder and going to sentence me to hanging. Mm, I don't remember you shooting anyone. Looks like uh, you got to work on that aim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. Uh, I'm going to need I, you to make a persuasion roll against Cole. Add a negative two because he hates your guts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right with that. He hates your guts. <laughs> well, that's fair. One, is it worth using my blue Benny or should I just fucking... I mean, do you, how, have do you want to keep him alive? No. So, so then a, instead of negative four. Yeah, it's, no, I can't so do it. You have to blow it up. I'd have to blow it up. Have and, to blow it up. Nah, I wouldn't do it, dude. I mean, I'll Save just use a regular three. Benny. Yeah. Bring the Benny, risk it up. No. Four. Yeah, blow up my four. That four. Six minus four, two. Nope. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I guess at, we should have saw it. Almost. At, at this <laughs> point, <laughs> at this point, you could use twice. that blue Benny if you want. Oh, but it's fucking cold, so. Actually, it's it's Harper's way. He's not trying to kill anybody if he doesn't have to. So this is what, plus four? Oh, no. oh are you no. kidding me? That's nope. crazy. So three. Damn. Okay. Well, wow. It's a crime. Then this is dice, guys. Now, I ain't going to prison there, Harper. So I reckon if you boys want to come in and get me, y'all can come in and get me. I don't want to kill you, Cole, but I will. Not if I kill you first. He pops out. Abel, it's your turn. He steps out onto the boardwalk. I mean, he's Cole Marston, so probably. <laughs> uh, he's a fucking idiot. Um, what? I, I, I'll i shotgun him then. Ugh. Right? Yep. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Get wrecked, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> uh, a five. 3d6. Yep. Yeah, it's the only ranged weapon I know. <laughs> Thank you. Nine damage. That's not very good. Oh, but I get plus two on shooting rolls. Yes, sir. So I would have been at seven. That's still not a raise. Nine is still... He's shaking. Yeah. Nine damage. He's actually wounded, isn't he? He's taking a third wound. You blast out, uh, and he sort of drops to a knee. Do you take a step back afterwards, or you just stand there? Um, I think I I shoot him and then actually take a step forward towards him. Um, At this point, you've convinced both Eugene and the marshal, and they just, you know, just kind of stand up watching. Alice, it's your turn. How far away is this this guy from me? Um, probably like 12 yards, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, so I can move right to him? Yep, you can move right to him. So yeah, I guess I, I've been making my way across this road here. I've yep. been watching all this unfold. Bullets are flying all around me. Yep. I've thrown some pebbles at some guys. So I guess I just approached behind a good old Cole. And I'm going to I'm gonna try and do a fighting roll on him. He's a uh, unarmed combatant, so you correct? Get plus two. Yep. His parry's five. Wait, does, don't you have to be armed? Uh, I have martial artists, so I am considered armed even mm-hmm. when I am unarmed. Uh, armed and dangerous at all bum, times. Bum, bum. James Bond, license to kill. What are you talking about? What is James Bond? What is I got a six. United States. You hit. So I hit. Yep. I'm going to try and, uh, yeah, just like punch him out. I didn't call a shot, so I'm going to have to just like, yeah, just punch him. <laughs> cool. <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> you just fucking clock him in the head. So my damage stomach. is just going to be equal to my, my strength. So Eight. I got a six. That blows up. Hell yeah. Got another six. Damn. Nice. Yes. You're calling him up. Plus a two. Oh, wow. Eight, so we're looking at three yeah. plus 12 plus he's, two. So he's that's out. All he's right. out for the count. How do you take him down? How do you take down Cole Marston? I think I come up behind him. Yes, he's yelling at you guys. I make my make my way across the road. Kind of reach my left hand around to his forehead. And with my right hand, I do a quick jab to the back of his neck. And he just falls limp in my arms. The marshal goes, uh, we didn't need to come to this boys, but uh, glad nobody else needs to die today. What what you mean nobody else? I reckon you got five dead men. Harper kind of shows himself. He means aside from those five dead men. (laughs) I do, indeed. (laughs) Eugene says something like, uh, Cole, whoa. Oh, cool. That's not what I had in mind, but that's fine, I guess. <laughs> that's really good. And he, uh, he says, uh, come on, Eugene, help me grab him. As you guys look around, see all these dead folk around. You can see that down south, there's black smoke rising on the horizon. Uh, here we go again, boys. Lucky, since you're here, that's roughly the direction of your mom's house. Your house. Lucky grabs everyone and uh, heads over to the horses immediately. You guys mount up and immediately 
wordlessly ride that way. As you crest a hill uh, surrounding the gate of your ranch, you can see that the house and the barn are burning, completely engulfed in flames. Harper's just going to sprint that horse as fast as he can. Do I see any people around? You sprint down there with that horse, and uh, no, there's no people around. The horse pulls up short, kind of hastily, as it doesn't want to get too close to the fire, and you jump off, but you don't see any people. All right, um, how fucked is the barn? Like, is there still a chance to save the horses? It has been burning for a long time, although the horses are just sort of roaming around inside of the gated ranch area. Okay, so the horses aren't in the barn. No, they're not. And I'm assuming the house is pretty fucked at this point too, right? Yeah, you look to the house completely engulfed in flames as well. By the time we get there, is there any chance of us being able to get inside this house? Um, you could try to push your way in there, yeah, if you weren't worried about falling beams and stuff. I think I'm going to chance that and try and grab uh, the one good picture of Ma. She said the one good picture of her. Yeah, you like kick your way in. Everybody sees Lucky disappear into the house, and before you really have time to react and go after him, he appears out just holding a single picture. Uh, Harper, this is pretty easy to spot. You haven't seen much arson in your day, but uh, you can definitely tell that there were two fuses laid along the ground, slow burn ones, that led to some sort of accelerant both on the barn and the house. So uh, can I make just a straight intelligence check to see how long it would take these things to burn? Smarts? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Five. You imagine that this was probably set the total fuse uh, about like four hours ago. So this is Cole and his boys. You take a look around. Um, man, what's your investigation? Is it better or worse than your smarts? Uh, worse. Worse? Make a roll for it. Five. You you take a look around. You see a set of uh, footprints jump, like off a horse nearby where the fuse was lit coming over to him. You wouldn't say they look like Cole's boots, though. They look uh, almost military. This was the goddamn ranger. Perhaps. So, uh, hey, Abel, you want to come over here a second? Did you say <sighs> ranger? He gets down with a, with a grimace and walks up. What? Recognize these boot prints? Would I? Yeah, you've been in, like... They're fucking Confederate standard issue, I imagine. Especially among mm. the Rangers and Rough Riders. I'm sure you've seen a ton of these boots, you know? Maybe they have a certain tread mark or, I don't know, a certain size, he, uh, a certain shape to them. He stands up and just kind of casts an eye around. Where's the fucking Ranger? I reckon we'll meet him soon enough. You can follow him easy enough to the gate, and then they head on south. I imagine you guys follow? Yep. Forehand, you took take one final look back. Your childhood home is burning. The barn is burning. And you head on south. End of episode. There we go, guys. Yeah. Oh, episode pretty good. Not bad. Not so bad. Rap, First baby. episode. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Sounds Like Crows. You can find us on Twitter at Sounds of Crows or on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Sounds Like Crows. The cast of Sounds Like Crows is as follows. Luciano Lucky Crow is played by Cameron Day. Ellis Crow is played by Alex Horrell. Thaddeus Crow is played by Marshall Sims. Harper Crow is played by Cameron Reed. And Abel Crow is played by Isaac Sunstead. If you'd like to find out more about us or give us any feedback, you can go to our website at soundslikecrows.com. And if you want to support the show, the best thing you can do is tell a friend about us or leave a rating and review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you found us. That's the show. I'll see you next Monday.